Hello, hello, and welcome into the LCS Challengers League. I'm Mad Magical, joined in by Kangas and Covey for an exciting day three in week four. We're almost done with our first week of the second part of the round robin. So, both of you, yeah, well, Steve, you're looking for I forgot, something. I forgot I was going to do this bit when we started here. Do the intro again, Magical. All right, all right, hold on. All right, hello, hello, welcome in everybody to the LCS Challengers League. I'm Mad Magical, joined in alongside Kangas and Cubby. We're on a day three of week four. We've already gotten most of the way through our weekend of the first part of the second round go. of Robin. Did that work there, Steve? Yeah, that was, was perfect. That, that was perfect. Yeah, I was looking all for right. the hat. I was like, I, I put it on the left side of the desk. I thought I left it on the right. So now that we're fully that, derailed. That's it. <laughs> we want to get into this? That, that was the whole... That I was the bit. I was, yeah, it was I just was waiting for, I was waiting for I so much more. more the, I am the so disappointed by this. But you, no, a bit absolute, absolutely disappointment here. Look Gone. at my face right now. Look at my face. Disappointment. Oh, I can feel I am it. disappointed by this one. But you know what I'm not disappointed by? We have community tweets that we can talk about. And hopefully that will lift up my spirits a little bit getting into this one. Especially because when we look at a lot of our community tweets, you know, we got the families involved. And I do love that. We got uh, Aurelian Soul played by APA yesterday. Sadly, didn't have the best performance. Uh, you know, it, it was at least able to find the rift as that series yesterday. I got to say that game two, that third dragon fight, one of the best fights I've seen this split from each of our teams. I thought the... Uh, Really, the quality of the series between TLC and FlyC rather strong yesterday. It makes me even more excited uh, for TLC versus Wildcard today, which kicks off the mainstream. I feel like we're starting to see teams punch up to Team Liquid uh, in the second round robin. First round robin, I feel like dominant. Second round robin, it feels like they have to work for more of their wins. So I'm very excited for what that means for the whole league. Yeah, same here. I mean, though game one yesterday against FlyQuest, they didn't really have to work for that. They got a quadra kill for Arrow right away, so oh, it was yeah. pretty easily uh, won that way. But this kind of tells you a little bit about that one. The game one went away from from a uh, FlyQuest, but they did really. Awry? I I was saying away because it's like I know it's a rye, but I'm saying it got all, away from them. It went all re. It's a rye. That's how you say it. But anyways, <laughs> Cubby, talk, talk to me about this. Talk to me about this. It, I'm, this I'm, is, I'm done with Steve's stuff. This is new levels of Unhinged. I'm going to be done with both your <laughs> stuff here pretty soon. Uh, but I, I got to say, last series on the mainstream today, uh, Fly C versus Fear. Shochi nearly had a double Penta series and has been dropping bombs everywhere. Yep. And Spyrax yesterday, what was that? 14-1 and one on Azir. Uh, both these ended up, he ended up uh, 17. 17, 17 yeah, because he tied Shochi's kills. Now it's a race for 18. Both yes. those mid laners, I think, are competing for the unofficial Player of the Week award, and they go toe-to-toe -to -toe at the rubber match tonight on the mainstream. And then also, a uh, shout-out to Quacker finding a split against MU as Supernova continues to pick up a win here and there. Yeah, and they also played it with the Darius. Quacker got to bust out his classic pick, pick in the Darius and was able to get game one victory against MU after MU had beaten Team Liquid Challengers in both early games. Honestly, I think they should have won both games against TLC. Also, fun fact: This is the real photo of uh, Quacker. This is not like an AI-generated one. This is this is actually him. This is just this is the guy. And now that you say that, it makes me think that it's an AI-generated one. I'm just gonna say that. No, now. Definitely not. Definitely but, uh, not one of those like trendy ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Hey. All right, Fear. I gotta give a big props of, over to Fear as well. They have yet to lose a single game all 2023 to EGC, yep. and that's going back in spring as well. Getting another 2-0 against them yesterday, Cubby. Uh, yeah, I, again, Shoshi has been playing really well this week, and good to see Fear somewhat bring it together. It feels like a team where it's like every week they're showing up differently, uh, for better or worse, but I gotta say this week Fear has been playing really well and uh, have a chance to get more wins on the stream today. Yeah, but you kind of alluded to something that we have coming up later today over on the main channel on twitch.tv slash LCS underscore challengers. Right now, actually. That, yeah, yeah. It's right. their first series. Uh, you're... Uh, you're you, right ruined my, you ruined my throw, but we're going to throw oh, it over well. to the uh, Super Heavyweight Smackdown. This weekend, a battle of gargantuan proportions. One match, two jumpers, infinite expectations. Super Heavyweight Smackdown is here, and it's bigger than ever! When the lanes can't control the action, the jungles of Runeterra become the battlefield. This week, two contestants in the race for most valuable prospect in the red corner! Forsaken his past, this player made his triumphant return last
last summer under Jim Chuck Turmeric and blew away expectations! Since then, his unpredictable style has become a staple of wild card traps. Tales have been told about his fight for king of the jungle, carrying the highest damage percentage of all jugglers in the league! Kill! And Jungle Blue Carter! Coming off a world's appearance on Chiefs, he joined NACL in spring and demanded respect through his gameplay. His regular season performance has led Team Liquid into a colossal lead in first. He's the most efficient juggler in the league, and he's attempting what has never been done before. The reigning MVP, trying it back to back. Titans clash! A tale is written! Only one can win! Super Heavyweight Smackdown! Great that video explains and a three. lot of why the energy is this way today, also, uh, by the way. Yeah, great, uh, great video, except for the arms. Except for the arms? What do you have against the arms? I thought that they were pretty well modeled, honestly. Uh, that was the problem. I think whoever modeled them really needs to work on their arm game. I uh, feel like it's yeah. lacking bi big time on that one. No, that, that matchup's so good that might explain why Mad Magical is wearing a Christmas shirt in July. A little bit of Christmas in July here. Hey, I'm glad, I'm glad you noticed. Presents. I'm glad you noticed. Hey, it's red, white, and blue as well. So we got we got we got the whole crossover going right now. I gotta say, where's Cubby's red, white, and blue? I, I will say yeah, again, my orange. tie that, counts. That looks orange. My tie counts. Really? There, there's some orange. white. Okay, I guess you can't really see it through my no. camera. Yeah, yeah it looks Cubby orange. even messaged me and said before broadcast, make sure you wear something red, white, and blue, and then this is what he shows up with. Yeah, I, I yeah, feel I like this is appropriate. I, it's, I, I, it's orange. It's unless you're Dutch, it doesn't really count. But let's get into. <laughs> let's actually talk about what we have here, and that is the standings. We got to talk Norwegian. about this a little bit. Uh, no, get out of here, Covey. We're talking about standings. We're talking about first place TLC, but tied in second place for a three-way tie is Wildcard, who's facing off against TLC. Like you said, going on uh, the first match, then the Skies and FlyQuest challengers all tied at second. I got to say, the mainstream today features the top five teams and AoE, who I think have looked a lot better this week. So really LCS good. challengers, all your top dogs are competing over there today, but it's been a deep league this split. And a lot of yeah. the teams, no matter where they all in the standings, believes that this might be the closest that we've ever seen the level of play in challengers ever be. As Maryville has proved that going 11 and 11. And a lot of the teams at the bottom of the standings have still been able to pick up a lot of wins this split. So that race to make top eight starting to heat up a little bit here, Kangas, as we are uh, nearly two thirds of the way done with our season after today. Uh, and of mm -hmm. course, we only t keep eight teams for playoffs. So all these teams trying to the avoid that promotion relegation tournament. And uh, uh, the four team that we're watching today are all teams at the bottom of the standings. So they're the ones yes. kind of in that conversation right now as we're getting towards the end of the summer split. This is the end of week four. I know it is blazed past. We're through the first round robin. We're about to be through the first week of the second round robin. So those teams at the bottom are starting to sweat and Taco versus Supernova in particular, really, really big match because head to heads could always come into effect when we are looking for who is gonna get, avoid that bottom two, get into that top eight, making it to playoffs. Bottom two will go into that relegation tournament. Ideally, you wouldn't want to be in that position. No, especially when we really? look at... Uh, yeah, yeah I, generally, ideally, generally. Ideally, that's how, kind of the idea of standings and not wanting to be in last week. place. Because when we look at this first one, yes, you're right, Steve. We look at this one, EGC are one of those teams that is unfortunately fighting for the bottom to try to get themselves out of that position. And they're going up against Maryville. So, Steve, walk me through a little bit. Evil Geniuses Challengers, they brought in 30, yep. but they're still struggling. Uh, so uh, th that was the big change going into this weekend. We knew that they were struggling. They've gone 0-4 with a new top laner. So uh, Soul, if you did not see on Twitter, did uh, announce retired from competitive play. He's going to look for greener pastures. Surdy is now in the roster. We were hopeful for what this would mean for the team. We have high uh, you know, views of Surdy as a player and a competitor. Hasn't clicked yet, but I will say it's not all doom and gloom when you have a, a last minute roster swap, or maybe not last minute, but you don't have a lot of time to practice with this roster swap. Things are going to look messy so far they have. Yeah, I mean, they really have. And then you got to compare that over against Maryville, who have actually been looking really strong so yep. far. The fact that they were able to split a series yesterday, even though it was against Supernova, who have been looking a lot better. And then earlier in the week, splitting that series against TLC. And like I talked about, 
Honestly, I thought that was going to be a 2-0 for Maryville, especially with how dominant they all were in the early game, Cubby. Maryville, like... They are still really playing their identity in challengers, and I gotta respect them for it, because a lot of that is about been playing early game and snowballing that into victories. But also, I think that Maryville has benefited a lot from the fact that when they go in, they go in as a team of five. Yeah. These guys have played together a while. They've gone through an entire collegiate season together. I think that's taken a lot of our challengers teams off guard. Not just how Maryville fights as a team, but also when they're willing to tank fights. Uh, picks like the Pantheon for Niles and MU, it's three and one because I think they can really force across the map and it's caught a lot of teams off guard yet again as Maryville are sitting middle of the pack in the standings. That's a big surprise for me personally. And I have to credit Maryville for their team play to explain why they're sitting at 11 and 11. Yeah, we'll take a look at their tape in a second here, but I want to highlight they're the team with the most one once. They, they have yeah, seven yes. split series so far. They are that team that will take games against top teams like Team Liquid and then also lose a game to Supernova, but still, they uh, when it matters, we know that they can perform. Yeah, and I think the big thing has to do with their early game, like I was kind of talking about. Yeah. When we look at how they play, a lot of it is they are willing to fight so scrappy early, like this TP from Gwen Cubby on I... level four. I love this play. I talked about this on my stream, shared a clip on Twitter. Niles actually proxied the wave, didn't even base, so we just instantly TP to the fight. Really broke the game plan that TLC wanted to use in this second game in the series, and mm -hmm. it enabled to get back and the team to get ahead as they really built off from there to get the win. And it's creative plays and angles like that. Again, I don't think a lot of teams or players would proxy that wave top and then TP down. Maryville does, and I think that netted them the win. I will say, I don't think any top laner in the league is proxying nearly as much as Niles. He will do this on every top. He'll do this on Renekton. He'll do this on the Gwen. Mm -hmm. I've seen him uh, even do this on Jace back in C-Lol. So he is willing to do these on different champions and then get onto the map much faster than oh. most top laners. It changes the way the team approaches situations because Maryville are more comfortable doing 5v4s very early in the game and sacking a wave top. Or like you said, in those instances, proxying the wave so that you don't even lose it. And I think a lot of that comes to how Niles plays with Auto Orange. I think that that's actually where they get a lot of their power is that Niles has Auto Orange usually in the back pocket. Think about, Cubby, you and I were talking about this a couple casts ago, the Sejuani Pantheon pick that they used to great success because of how easily you can stack up that permafrost. It's a unique duo and one that, honestly, EGC are going to have their hands full with today. Uh, with Surti, of course, in his first week now competing with the team, that was an auto orange have been a lot for a lot of the teams in the league to handle. Yeah, mm -hmm. and speaking of that, we do have some tape that we can watch of Surti playing because it is his first week still. So we have to kind of get, get, uh, take that with a pinch of salt, right? So th this guy just joined with the team. Brand new environment. How has he been performing so far, Cubby? Honestly, Surti's been about what I expected and the fact that he's been doing pretty well in lane. And I think that EG, a lot of their identity has actually been playing towards Surti, which is... Uh, really, w where Team Liquid first found the most success last split uh, was mm -hmm. empowering Surdy. Surdy's still able to execute good landing phases, and really like this moment. I know they dropped O2 to Fear, but uh, to initially get the kill onto Philip, Surdy has double buffs, Wave's frozen, uh, Shaden is up there, they see Parry, and Shaden is able to find a way to actually get around the Wukong to punish the Flash being down again. This is a nice moment from the side of Surdy and Shaden, and we're hoping to see more of these plays because EG record is for sure not where we want to see it uh, and honestly they're gonna need some more of those if they want to start calling back in because we're almost two-thirds of the way done with the season and at the moment mm -hmm. if the season ended today they would be in the promotion relegation tournament so, mm -hmm. so that's yeah. a big concern as one of the three challengers teams that we have competing that are a part of lcs franchise orgs in the league what I will say about Surdy and what he brings to Evil Geniuses is, is in the second clip in particular, I know Joshi loves to talk about this. I started to notice it more because he talks about it so much. When players are willing to hold an ability, not use it right away, and then wait till the opportune moment, uh, Surdy has that kind of mentality. He's got yeah. the mechanics down as a top laner. We know this for him. Now for EG, it's getting over that hurdle of how do they play as a team? Because often when I watch them, even when it was soul plane, it felt more like watching a high challengers Q or a high challengers solo queue game rather than like a, a team five v five game, uh, and even some of their drafts felt like that way in some instances. So hoping that they're able to get on the same page, play as five. 
All right, we've been talking a lot about the top lanes, and I know, Steve, you made yeah. a graphic for us that is very near and dear to your heart as someone who, I, I, don't, I don't know if people know this about Steve out there, but he actually likes to lift weights a lot. He's very fit. Occasionally. And, occasionally, every let once me, in a while. Let me demonstrate a 200-pound grip strength for everybody at home. Yeah, just, there we go. Just to, just to kind of illustrate that, there you go. All right. So, Steve, why don't you walk us through this graphic a little bit? I'm excited to, because I, uh, I noticed something about our top laners going into this one that not many pros share in common, both a little bit of gym bros going on here. So I, I reached out to them, I asked for their stats. Now, it is important to note, Ooh. the visual is slightly misleading for Surti. He does not have <laughs> hard stats for these from recent <laughs> years. Uh, he said a lot of these are estimates from old PRs that he thinks he had, like for, he remembers in his past, because all he's doing now is machines. Still a strong dude, though. Uh, but you will notice, deadlift is pretty low for Surti. He noted his back is not very strong. Niall's doing a lot of the heavy lifting for his team. So, Cubby, when you, when you think about how, how much weight you have to put on your back in Challengers League games, uh, I feel like I'm, I'm edging out on Niles here. I, I mean, I, I love the fact that Surti is, like, estimating his numbers while he has higher LP. I feel like that explains a lot of League of Legends <laughs> right there. Uh, but, hey... Yeah, we got a couple top winners that like to whip their teams up, and I gotta say, Niles is someone that it feels like Niles has almost gone a little bit overlooked uh, in a, a split where we've been pretty excited about a couple of the new top winners that we've had. Uh, the likes of Quacker, I think Fake God's been playing really well. Niles has very quietly been going toe to toe with every single one of them. So yeah, I, I want to see if that can continue today. As Surdy, known for his landing phase, and fun fact, this was a matchup in that promotion relegation tournament where I feel like Surdy did get the best of Niles, even if Maryville get the best of TLF. So uh, curious to see how that one pans out. All right. Well, guys, I, we've talked about the top lane a lot, and I do like that you're giving Niles a lot of shouts because I think he has been someone that has been outperforming a lot of our expectations going into the split. But everyone in chat, make sure you're spamming either M, U, or E, G, C to let us know who you think is going to win this one. But I'm going to let you two take this away. Get us into game one of our series between Maryville and Evil Geniuses Challengers. Thank you, Magical Cubby. Game one underway to close out week four of the NACL broadcast. I cannot believe we're already done with the first week of the second round robin after today. This season's been going by quick, and then we're already into that playoffs run. There is a chance EGC are not in that run. Expectations for that were so low. When we looked at this roster, we were thinking, all right, King's going to be here. Like, they're going to be popping off. Let's see if they can turn their season around here in the second round robin. I, I still think they're not even going to be close to there, but we'll see. Uh, you, you just see, hey, play's been a little bit here and there. Uh, but hey, good opportunity to find some quality wins, honestly, against Maryville. And I, I think that's a huge compliment. We're, we're saying that if a challenger team takes games off a collegiate team, that's quality wins in the league. I, I think that really speaks to what Maryville yeah. has been able to accomplish and the expectation that we have. This was a team that I had bottom three. They've proved that they're middle of the pack at the moment with some honestly really good team play and some standouts from individuals that I'd love to see step up. I think Zyko has been fantastic on the engagers. Otto Orange has been having a very yeah. solid split as a whole. And Niles, I know Mad Magic was like, hey, like we didn't really have expectations. I didn't have expectations as much for Maryville. I did have some for Niles, but he's met those as he's been able to take on every top player in the league. So I want to see if Maryville can continue to put on good performances here as EGC looking to get some more wins that are much needed late in the split. We'll talk about more of that top lane matchup as we get through pick and ban, but let's catch up on that real yeah. quick, because MU are targeting a lot of the junglers that Shaden can carry with, with Kindred and the Viego taking off the table. Jack's taken away as well. LeBlanc, Nico, Tristana, all mid laners, mind you, that get back will not have, so they prioritize a Zier first pick for MU. You have seen Ryoma play quite a bit of Syndra. This split might be an option into the Azir, yeah. keeping that at bay, as that would slow down the game a little bit. Uh, overall, Maryville's like to play fast. Like, when Maryville gets ahead, they will fight you to keep on getting kills. Uh, so something where I'm curious to see how EG will respond to that. It seems like EG want to fight some fire with fire as it will be the Shwani locked on in. And then it looks like a deny of that Zaya Rakan combo that could come in on 2-3 if they do choose to walk in this Zaya. Uh, I, here's my tinfoil hat conspiracy theory. Because right. if we look at what Shaden has played for the last couple of games, um, what, what do we know Shaden for, Cubby? Last split, actually. Okay. Let's well, do a little table setting here. You know what? I'm just going to pause it because I, you know, going through the VOD review yesterday, Shaden Sejuani was not hit. There were a lot yeah. of fights where I was like, why are you leading with ultimate? Like, go for the full Sejuani combo and then follow up with ult, right? We know Shaden for the fighters, the brawlers. But the last few games, he's been on a very 
uh, supportive shampoo is where you're going. Tinfoil hat. Yep. Shaden did something to piss off evil geniuses. And they're like, nope, you're on Sejuani duty for the weekend. We're going to go <laughs> in six. It's fine. But this is your punishment for whatever he did. Not saying that's what happened. Tinfoil hat conspiracy. But he has been playing it a lot. And I love Shade on the carries. Now on the Sejuani duty. Let's see if it works this time around. Renekton would be a good pair for that. It's going to be into the Ivern and the Rel, a tried and true classic. We've seen a lot of these two champions rising in priority. And a curious draft so far because a lot of different roles locked in. We have jungle for each team, but it's marksman and top laner versus mid and support. So uh, the ability to throw out some target bans now, protect yeah. some of those roles that are showing and hidden for the opponent. So Pantheon being taken away, that is a Niles matchup into the Renekton. We even gave it a shout in the pre-show how good he's been at that Pantheon. Not only uh, just playing the lane, but also playing with the team, his ability to find unique timers. Uh, as mm -hmm. it's a pick so good that I'm like, hey, why doesn't why don't other teams play it? Niles thinks it's because the mid game is so different. The fact that you have to uh, pressure other lanes with that ultimate. A lot of teams haven't chose to actually invest time into that. MU has, and the Panth has been a really good pick for them, sitting at 3-1 and one this split. It, and he loves to play it into this matchup in particular. He also plays a lot of the NAR. So two play. of Niles' counter picks that he likes to play into this, taking off the table. EG focusing on that top matchup. They know Surdy can't deadlift as much, so they're trying to get him a comfortable matchup at least. Uh, honestly, for Niles, then, I'm thinking it could be just the Orn. It would be a triple magic damage top yeah. side, but... At least it's playable, because when you look at the draft as a whole, that's showing EG very much indexing into that early game with the Sejuani, plus the Renekton. Not a lot of range. You have a Zaya too, going to try and get pushed early. Recon pairing was a 9, and also that Cinder that I gave a shout to by Maryville. Uh, whereas on the side of Maryville, Azir, a little bit more late game. Ivern scales really well. A Rel can be that big engage that we've seen Zyko be really strong at. The meta swap's been really good, I think, for MU. Oh, it's been fantastic. Zyko, he was serviceable on the Enchanters. I mean, he made c -Low finals, after all. But definitely looks better on the Engages, and Rel fits into that bill. Let's see what Smoothie plays into it, though, because they have not locked in support. Saving oh, support Olaf. counter pick to the very end, and it's Olaf for Niles. Not the ore, and they're not going for a tanky teamfight. They still want to fight for that top lane. Okay. I um, Again, the Orn was kind of the safety pick I saw. MU, you know, wanting a lot of scaling, kind of neutralizes the Renekton lane. Olaf, though, can fight, fight a little bit of fire with fire. And also, once you get past level 6, Jwani no longer has that impact on you when it comes to the lockdown. It's going to be the damage which Olaf can survive. So, uh, with that said, Olaf, pretty strong front line. Ezreal will be the pairing. So, trying to fight a very short-range composition of EG with some range with that Ezreal. I must say, I do like that. Also, dissuades a potential Alistar pick here. One of the better counters that we True. have into Rel, and also a champ that Smoothie was known for even on the world stage when he was playing on LCSs. Oh, this would be fun. Do it. We had a bard. Let's we go. Got it. Let's go. Smoothie bard. Now this is a throwback because Smoothie is one of the players. I I became a bard man because I was a huge Aphromoo stan. Okay. Then I became a fan of Smoothie because he also played the bard pig back when he did have his stint in LCS. It's a comfort pick for him. It's something that not many supports actually pull out and is very unique in how you can play the game with it. You can either use it for engage or you can just delay fights, stop flankers from coming in. It's very versatile in what it brings to the table. It, I, This is very interesting because I I think the, the alt's going to have a lot of value here for Smoothie. If you are able to like cut off Olaf from the rest of his team. Maybe there's some power in that, trying yeah. or using the magical journey to actually wait out that Olaf ultimate. I can see this being pretty good into Olaf, who is very much gated by uh, terrain and, uh, you know, range you can build. So, you know, little magical journey over a wall. Olaf can't really follow that. So, yeah, not bad here for the side of EG. Uh, but I, also, I'm curious if you can get out of lane, man. If you can get out of lane, sure. It, it also is a decent counter into something like Azir. Because if Get Back goes for a big shuffle play, yep. you just try and ult the Ivor and ult the Rel so they can't follow up. Yep. And now Azir's just in the middle of your team. <laughs> you can just turn and focus down the big bird. So again, the creativity of Bard is often where the strength in the pick comes out. How you choose to use yeah. this incredibly impactful ultimate. Taking the W start, though, I do like this. So when we look at the runes, there's a couple ways to play the Bard. I'm going to get on my pedestal because I'm a support main, and this is one of the champs I've played yep. a lot of, if not actually just the most. Going for W start with Guardian. So expecting more of a tankier build for the Bard. And three biscuits for Ryoma. Whew, all right, well, uh, 
Never done that one before, but what this does is it allows you to trade so aggressively as a mid laner because you can always just walk back and pick up those bard Ws, heal back up, get back into that mid lane. So get back. I'm expecting him to be under a lot of pressure now. I'm expecting Ryoma to go for heavy trades. Okay, well... We've got, yeah, Bard pick on NACL, and yeah, Ryoma, that's that's a nice little handicap to start the lane with, right? You, you, get, you get three plus signs behind you, mm -hmm. the ARAM, you know? Get back's gotta Basically, feel like that's yeah. not too fair. Yeah, see, like, look, he's just gonna walk up and do this, trade, the get the electric get Brock, now he can walk back, heal back up, he's like, it's like the trade never happened to me, like, it's it's just impossible for get back to do anything yeah. about this. Oh, yeah, look at that, get back's like, what the heck? Like old, so old, usually uh, the tech is you drop one in case your mid laner goes for a rough trade. You keep the res greedily for yourself. I do like this, though, because it tells me that they're not playing for bot lane here. They are actually playing for mid lane as Leiko does land the stun. Not going to go for anything more here, just trading. But even then, once those mid lane ones are picked up, you can start dropping them for yourself down bot lane. So it's actually kind of a cool tech. I do like this from Smoothie. And meanwhile, Shaden actually going to go for a three camp where he is not spotted on the ward. Might be able to sneak up and impact that Olaf lane early, Kangas, if he is able to get up there. Let's see. We know that the Sejuani plus Renekton can stack that passive very fast. You get two stuns. Kind of like the Pantheon, very much similar. And Odd Orange is passing back bot side, so he's not going to be around to hover oh. in case they do go for the gank. He prepped the Raptors, but he's yet to smite. Usually a lot of Ivern paths we see, it's oh. you prep three camps and then you smite the red. Uh, and then kind of work your way back, but Auto Orange actually had a really big opener where he prepped five. So he's going to have the very fast Ivern clear. Uh, so he can now smite away the Krugs. So that will be his first fight. Yep, taken away, and now he can actually impact the map uh, and go rush bot lane, where the Bard, a little bit on the back foot. Uh, something, another way that I like the Bard this game, Kangas, is that, mention how EG feel like they have to play a little bit quicker. Uh, Bard can go impact that mid lane, which could be really important for speeding up the game. That's yeah. something that EG's going to need to do if they want to win. As oh, oh, boy. Bram with the trades on to get back. But now Odd Orange is here for backup. Almost got the solo kill. They did not expect Shaden to be there. I don't expect a kill, though. Odd Orange has a wave to play with, so both duos back off. Still, though, we see the repercussion of Ryoma getting those aggressive trades. Get back has to back early. And given where Ryoma has that lane right now, he doesn't actually have the base. That's so scary, Jerry. That's yeah, that's a lot of damage. That's scary, Jerry. Smoothie flashes forward. One more bar bird auto Ooh. has it. Can't land it though. Zyko has flash. Should be able to get out of this one just fine. Actually sticking around. Auto what? Bridge. What? <laughs> what? Gets a solo kill on Ryoma, who stuck around to shove in the wave. And okay, I guess first blood mid lane. Why not? He flashed too. What happened? I got to see a replay of that mid lane. As the wave was set up perfectly for Ryoma to base, save that TP, but instead, Flash, first death goes over to the side of MU is okay. Hold on. A lot of trades top lane. Undertow lands. If Niles Freeze. gets one more, maybe goes to the Flash E. Doesn't get it, though. Surdy used Ignite there, yeah. so doesn't have the teleport to get back into lane. Let's get a replay. I think oh. Surdy thought it was... Oh, Ryoma. Oh, no. That's a little no. bit of window shopping. He flashes after this too. Oh no, he. Oh, the airy. Oof. On his auto. Oh and no. And the red buff. Yeah. Greedy base. That's punished by Maryville. Can't make these mistakes against this collegiate team. As. Yeah, Niles knows that his lane's pretty good. He can TP back and actually shove this in. Surdy is going to be forced to head for the hills here. And he doesn't have that TP. I think that he took the ignite. Thinking that it might have been a ghost and a flash from Niles, but Niles actually takes the TP. Uh, a little bit different in this lane. We've seen Olaf yeah. go for a lot of different specs, but it means that he can get back in, and Surdy's going to have to be on the back foot of this matchup. So he, had, he does have a CS lead and a nice item advantage on this first base. Uh, Surdy would just have to use that to punish uh, the lack of experience now that he's going to be missing his Niles took TP back. Another little instance there. I hate to point it out, but I think it's important to. Ryoma goes for the charm as Shaden turns around. In moments like that, if Shaden trusts Ryoma to hit the charm and sticks around, you can Arctic Assault in, at least get Flash out of get back, or maybe cooldowns. But they call it off. Do not go for the play. But yeah, top lane, at least Surdy does have the CS advantage, even though he doesn't have the TP. Niles does like to take that to get onto the map early, as we had highlighted in the pre-show. But in terms of the top lane matchup, Surdy is coming out ahead for now. We'll have that Ignite coming off cooldown relatively soon and could look for an aggressive trade. Yeah. This is about where that 
Renekton and Olaf match up this go, though. Uh, so, not, nothing yep. too Big crazy has happened yet, as you can see, Surdy. As he has that in Power W, you can find those big trades. Ooh, Dominus popped, so is Ragnarok. Niles fancied himself to fight, and Shaden's oh. here, so Niles in a lot of trouble. He's, as he's flash available, flash. Arctic Assault in, and he's down. Well played by Surdy and Shaden as playing around the top side. It goes in EG's favor. No surprise with the Renekton Sejuani, but nice on Shaden to hit that as EG. Can be spotted here is okay, Ryoma. Members divide in, takes a lot of damage right back. Ryoma might turn this. Doesn't quite have the damage yet. Odd Orange was hovering. We'll spot out Shaden, and it's a fight for the Scuttle. Shaden should get that one. Ryoma almost got that solo kill, though. Nicely done. Gage on to King. He should be fine. Scary Jerry's quite low, and Bard does his scary amount of damage. Ooh, Feather Recall flashed by Zyko. That route would have meant a death, so Summoner Spell used for Ignite Trade. Done by the EG bot one. I, they've gotten both flashes out as King with the Lethal Tempo Zaya has just been able to DPS down the bot lane of MU with the help of the Bard. I want to see if Smoothie can get involved on the map as Get Back has no ultimate. You can go impact mid. Herald's coming up soon, which is very preferable uh, for Bard. The you know Bard team's able to make uh, the roam over there. So mm -hmm. let's see if Smoothie can utilize some of the power of Bard when it comes to outside of lane where Bard can be quite a unique champion uh, that makes map a little bit more difficult. I gotta say, it's kind of fun having Iron and Bard in the same game. It's like two it of the is. most unique champs that are in the Two of the goofiest champs in the game. A yeah. little bit. Throw on Tom Kench and Zoe, and then we can just call it a circus. I will say, the Bard, it gets out of lane once the Zai is level 6. I think you do need that ultimate on King to allow you to roam, because King can always just trade ult for ult if Zyko goes for a crazy engage. It happened. Level 6 hit for King. And what happens? Smoothie's on the map now. So they are setting up for the Herald EG prepping for this and they're even sending king here so it looks like eg fancy themselves a 5v5 mu might just answer king, he's not spotted yet as shaden's gonna get chunked he leaves with ultimate odd orange very low but i mean you're you're just playing daisy you're not even playing I... Ivory. your health bar doesn't matter oh king's very far forward engage charm oh, no. on the psycho he's taking a lot of damage doesn't have the flash from the earlier play and he goes Boy. down king credited with the kill eg Posturing for the fight of Herald, and they get this kill on a support. That should earn them the objective. Niles has the ult. He wants this. That's a lot of chunk damage. I don't know if Ivern's going to be enough to actually turn the play. Yeah, that's Flash oh. out of Niles. How bad does Surdy want it? Yeah, Flash. Flash from Smoothie! Oh. Bard gets the kill. Okay, going over the wall, finding the Flash. Smoothie says, thank you very much. That's a bloodthirsty support as EG finds two on the top side. And I gotta say, I'm surprised that Maryville have been contesting this. As I look at the EG comp, this is Sejuani Renekton topside, Angus. It's gonna be really tough to break this. Sorty has Ignite 2 to help. I, I think that it might have been a better call for MU to play elsewhere, try and trade around the map. Allow your team to scale a little bit and get some gold where you can. Instead, they contest EG. And EG gets the best of them when I feel like their comp's a lot stronger. And now Surdy actually pulling the Niles. He's going for the proxy wave. Has Shaden in his back pocket. Niles is in trouble. Niles does not realize it. Shaden's right here. And that's going to be a third death onto MU's top laner. Maybe oh, Otterwatch can save him, though. Flash is in. Niles turns the play no with an Iron Shield on top. Flash from Shaden to escape. Oh, Odd Orange playing hero right there. Bash Brothers get the best of the new duo of EG. As Odd Orange comes to help lift Niles up and over the threshold needed to take down that Renekton. And now back in the top lane, Olaf will be able to get that wave in, get something back. Very important that Niles didn't go down there. Honestly, if he does, his game ends. Ooh, oh, another feather recall. Oh Zyko's going to die. Oh, getting punished for not having that flash. King and Smoothie are actually playing this lane incredibly well, despite their top lane struggling after that last play. I got to say... Going bigger picture here, Cubby. EG are playing this much better, much more cohesive. Their lanes are doing better individually, even though this play goes poorly. Do you see what they're trying to do? They had a game plan set. I think Surdy actually missed the fight during this too. So going for this kill was really expensive. He got the free goal from the fight as uh, Hot Orange being there. Enough to turn that around. Sorry, I was distracted. I was looking at that lower third. We had a Bard ult go down onto the turret. No play comes through though for EG and I gotta say for EG, I know that they are a team that is 7 and 15 right now. It's been a disappointing split for EG. 
But it has not been a disappointing split watching King and Smoothie play bot lane. I, I feel like the two of them have actually been playing pretty well for the side of EG, and it's good to see them showing up. A unique counter pick from Smoothie. King and him are really cashing it in to the max degree here, Kangas. They've gotten a couple kills in lane. They've gotten off yeah. onto the map to impact the Herald. Great stuff from EG's bot lane to start things off. And also, you know, they're, they're winning over the fans with the bard pick. I think that's something that's underrated <laughs> from teams. Big wacky stuff. It'll make people like you. And uh, bard definitely fits <laughs> that bill. I will say also to Ryoma, getting almost two plates mid lane, having the shove there, even though went down, gave that first blood. I'll get back to that point, though, as Surdy could be in trouble yet again. Undertow from Niles. Out Orange sticking back to try and bait Surdy in, but Niles just wants this. Pops to Ragnarok. will go forward. Undertow after Undertow. Surdy has to flash. Still not all bad, as at least Surdy is able to live, and that enables Jade and the Smoothie to start this dragon and pick it up smoothly over the side of MU. Ah. They have no contest. Come on in. I gotta test myself during the downtime, Kangas. That's good, good use of it, you know. Throw out some uh, the board words play. that sounds like other words that sound like other words. Make sure it's nice and clean. Just like uh, oh, I was gonna say, just like the bard cube, the one wide bummer. Next time. Uh, the get back goes in. Shuffles in towards Odd Orange. Ryoma has spear rush though. Very good counter to the Emperor's Divide. Hard to lock down this champion. And no kills from either side. Get back wanted to set up the play. Shaden wanted to set up the play. We'll just drop the Herald instead. It was timing out shortly, so just some plate gold over to Ryoma and Shaden. Hey, there was a daisy kill, Kangas, right? Put some respect in that thing. True, that we're is Ivern, basically. We're still on 13-12, man. Daisy's a real fighter. <laughs> Matters a little bit. As mid priority goes over to EG, 2k gold lead for them early. I think they need to open up this gold lead more, though. Moonstone Ivern. Oh. Really Moody. tough to break later. You just trolled your mid laner. First off, first off, he took some of the plate gold. Second of all, he he missed the uh, the item kill on the cannon minion. That's two in a row. Two strikes, Smoothie. I'm, I'm keeping count. Don't worry about it, man. He's fun. <laughs> He's playing bard, man. He's just Feels like when you lane with me, doesn't it, Cubby? Oh, it's actually, uh, gets a lot worse when that happens. Uh, it's <laughs> still going a lot better than that, but I, I, if you're on Bard, it's usually not that bad, you know? That's true. Sometimes my swing. Sometimes. Oh. Odd Orange sticking around topside. Smoothie is still here, but now just goes for a reset. Okay, they just wanted to get the wave in. Not going to go for a play. I looked at Bard ult. Anytime you see that, again, the creativity of this champ, you can use the Bard ult on a turret and go for a dive. It's much easier to execute because you're not worried about all that damage you're taking. So whenever I see a bar in a rounded area, I'm always thinking about that. Are they going to go for the play? King it plays at the moment. I want EG to try and play around King. This Kraken Slayer is done on the Zaya. I think that right now you have a lot of pressure into the Ezreal still. Harry Jerry has kept up. He does have that Trinity Force completed himself. But Zaya is very scary when you finish up that Kraken Slayer. The attack speed steroid is a lot. And I think that Smoothie has... Potential to lock down Ezreal. There's some goofiness with Ooh. Bard. Ooh, big damage onto yeah. Scary Jerry right there. They had that ward placed down, so they saw where he was walking to. And that chunked out Ezreal. They're actually pulling multiple members down. Zyko and Odd Orange will hang out around here. Oh, they saw the Daisy. <laughs> you mean uh, he's not there? Funny. It's fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, you Daisy's like maybe Ivern's topside and Daisy's bot. You know, you ever think about that? There it is. Hot Orange gets uh gets the Krugs now on the Ivern. Uh, some of the changes they made to Ivern makes that Krugs feel a lot better. A smoothie. Hey. Um, Ooh. Nice. Okay. All right. Bardolt will save the AD carry, but that is Ghost and Bardolt down just for King hitting a wave. You gotta respect that. I wonder what Smoothie was saying in that moment because he saw Zyko and Odd Orange walking up. Either way, though. I don't think it's going to mean much. Herald is started, so they are also delaying Odd Orange down there. It will be an objective pickup for EG. So at the end of the day, good bait. Wasting Ivern's time. Taking down here, side of Shaden. As EG is still going to be able to hit this turret. Thanks to the chunk that that play started with, Kangas. A lot of that was Maryville just trying to protect Scary Jerry, who of course uh, was burned down by the side of EG. EG's map is pretty good at the moment. Mid about to fall. Bot might fall on this wave as King. Yeah, he got some free time with that. That's Kraken Slayer Zaya for you. As 
Hey, how about now? That's looking pretty worth it now, Kangas, huh? Yeah. Yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah. Making me eat my words. Yeah. I, I'm, Let's I'm go, EG. Let's go, EG. Yeah. They're we'll making the best out of the situation, getting the Herald and then also the bottom turret. They have Herald in the pocket of Shada now. They can use that either top lane, get Renekton out of this lane, more onto the map, or use it mid. Mid's about to go down, so if they get a big play around this next dragon, they can take turrets with a Herald. They can maybe even threaten tier two turrets with a Herald. Yeah. And you are going to have to play a little more defensively here. I don't see a world where they really can test this dragon. I, I think EG should uh, throw this Herald down mid as dragon spawns. You're guaranteed to get a good roll on the dragon. Yeah. Uh, Chemtech and Cloud are the first two. It means that the dragons that you're fighting towards all pretty high value. Uh, you're just hoping to not roll Ocean. Everything else you're coming up feel pretty damn good about. So I want to see if EG... I can make sure they execute this one cleanly. They have push mid, and Surdy's walking down. Remember, Surdy doesn't have teleport, so he's got to play here. Look if I am you, I'm saying give up the dragon, play for yep. top. You can get a top turret basically for free here. Let's see if they decide to do that. I really like what Surdy's doing at the moment. He found auto orange. He kind of sees Zyko or can guess that he's around. He's just not hitting that wave, making sure that he's safe, making sure that EG also has the space on the map to this dragon uncontested as we will have a mountain soul so great roll for eg be very happy with that one as mountain very valuable this game and mu don't get much for the dragon they just spotted out by sturdy as you had mentioned now heralds dropped mid so eg don't use it as the distraction tactic they do want to use it to get more gold in their pocket with all the work that the first herald and ryoma had done earlier let's see how much damage they can get on this tier two turret it's tough against an ivern because the the brushes make it so scary to actually walk up, so it's just one charge, a chunk on tier two, and EG will walk back, reassign themselves to the side lanes. Ryama going bot lane, Surdy going top. I think that a lot of players are talking about right now, the power of Ibram with the support pool. Like, hiding Rel in one of those brushes is yeah. so deadly for teams to deal with, especially as Rel, you know, uh, somewhat telegraphed and gauged that you have to prep a little bit, uh, especially if you don't have that flash, so the brush just in opens up the space for you to make sure that those land cleanly as eg i think it's really important moving forward kangas that they do not allow maryville to get their hands on a dragon mountain dragon paired up with moonstone ivern i i really think that giving maryville any of these could be very harmful for eg moving forward especially looking at their draft this is a draft that will get outpaced over time so eg let's see if they can continue to put the pedal to the metal as Birdie. They're hovering top. Remember that Bard ult tech. You can always ult the turret if you want to go for the dive. Zyko jumps in, though, following up on the Ivern Q. Oh, what, no is, it with, what is it with Shaden and just leading with Sejuani all? <laughs> I, I, I feel like every time I see him play Sej, it's just we press R first. Yeah. It, that, that's, it's the big button, you know? It's the fun go button. You but, like the fun go button. The fun, everyone do. likes the fun go button. But you know how much damage you do with a full combo with Sejuani, man? This champion's not balanced. Well, but the permafrost that followed That requires up. more buttons and specifically clicks. Whereas Shaden's the big a freak. fun go button He's is mechanically just a so good. <laughs> He's good at hitting those buttons. Always. Maybe this is his, again, tinfoil hat conspiracy. This is his counter counter to having to play Sejuani. He's like, all right, so if you're going to put me on Sejuani, played. I'm going to throw old every single time. Oh, no. no? Just how it's gonna go. Uh, curiously enough, actually, get back. Starting with a Nasher's Tooth. I usually see Crown something else from the Azir. I, I would like to see a Crown this game from Azir. Be very valuable as 30 lands in a really nice trade in the top side. And Smoothie, they're on the hover at the Pardon. Make it sure is. this Renekton is nice and safe. And Smoothie, doing a nice job of covering his bases and using the power of Bard, which is you walk between lanes faster than anyone else. I think, get based on the compositions, 280 carries that can be defensive and lane by themselves, two supports that want to roam, two junglers that don't need resources themselves, and two carry top laners. This is the perfect equation for everyone to hover topside, and I love that that's been happening, because just nobody plays like this right now. At least it's been so long since this has been the meta, and uh, it's so refreshing to see us actually looking at the top half of the map, unironically showing action. surdy has been slowly putting in chip work on this turret. We'll finally take it down. Scary Jerry checks for the Baron. It is not being taken. He walks up here. Gonna be taking a lot of damage. You gotta be careful. Get back in there. 
and the flash from mid laner and AD carry. Ryoma jumps on to scary Jerry, though. The big flank is there. Has to flash defensively. Get back is here. Ryoma could be in trouble. Couple more autos, and he's down. That's a shutdown over to get back. Not sure how that happened. Serting, meanwhile, threatening a flank of his own. EG have lost their mid laner, though, so I think the fight's done. They gotta get out of here. Smithy might need an ult to get Serti out, but no, Serti still locks down. He's out of there. Zyko looks for more, and where are we? If not by the Baron. MU take two, and they will start up the objective. Hey, EG just goes for solo plays there. A like, King gets chunked on his own. He's the strongest member. Then Ryoma tries to clean up the mess. Just nothing to be had. As EG not steal. playing together as five, get punished by MU, who have been really good at playing together as five. As we okay. Jaden locked down. King has no ultimate. Oh, it's a bouncy house. Flash from Niles to follow up on Shaden. Undertow lands. Shaden should just go down. Smoothie might get him to safety. Niles with one more Undertow. Do they take it? They don't. Okay, Shaden will get out, but that's Baron secured for MU. All the hard work for EG now goes to the wayside. 15 seconds till this dragon spawns. Maryville will be out on the map in time to pick up a mountain dragon for themselves, which everyone makes a really big difference for them in this comp position. And again, EG, I mean, it's just solo plays, man. I, I, they they yeah. have a lead. They've done so much good work, and then it's just one mistake, and everything goes to the wayside as can't make mistakes like that against Ivern. Ivern is so punishing. That is ability to sustain members and stay on the map. As they start the siege here in the mid turn, EG will try and stop this. Zyko. Zyko. Zyko's got a big flank right now. Oh, no ultimate dead. available though, and just locks down. Zyko's out! Get back uses the Emperor's Divide defensively. They drop the Azir turret, so MU lose their support. They do claim the turret. Good for EG to at least find one though in reply. We see a push for the dragon here. It's a 5v4. EG have the majority of their alts up. It will only be like Ariel missing for this fight. Wow. I really want... I'm really surprised that EG didn't take this. I know yeah. it's Baron, but they have every alt up but Ari. I think that if you're able to get in, I mean, there's no Emperor's Divide. Like, it was... It's gone. There's no Daisy. I think that's a fight that EG could have taken. And again, I think giving away dragons to MU really difficult against this composition. Because now you have to get through all those bonus resistances, which are going to be even more difficult to get through when you have the extra shields and healing coming in from the Ivern and the ability to stall out the game. So I think the game state right now is actually really good for MU. I said it before, and I'll say it again. Sometimes it feels like EG play more like a solo queue game than a 5v5. I think that that last play where things got out of control, they lose the Baron, kind of encapsulates that. And then afterwards... I mean, everyone just spreads. <laughs> they get a kill on the Zyko and they just run away from each other. They do not want to be on the same screen. And it's moments like this that can lose games for you because they had the control and now MU are pulling it back. We know MU is a cohesive unit. We know they play as five and we know that they will take an inch and turn it into a mile. They're doing it with this Baron. They get mid turret, they get dragon, they get top turret. They are grouped up and they're pushing. All right, MU will have Baron going. We have Udi looking for that tempered faith. Angus, not to be found. No play. It's MU gonna get double push in. Start sieging on the inner. Is that gold lead? DG put so much good work in early has now gone to the wayside as it is even and the comp for Maryville Ooh. is scary. Ryoma, get back though. That could be huge. Get back. Good. Good. He's down. Nice. Massive from our Ryoma. Temper oh. Fate lands on the two as well. This is a perfect double stun setup or at least one. If they can take down Odd Orange that's a double kill to King. Now they're on to Zyko. Charmed up. No flash. He's going to go down Got it. as well. Big swing for evil geniuses. What more can they get done? Triple kill to King. 5v2 on the map. Good play coming out from Ryoma, laying the trap in the brush. Maryville, they don't scout it. And the follow-up from Smoothie was fantastic there, Kangas. Is this Bard, your ability to follow up picks? First off, it's get back. Ryoma sneaks into the brush. Get back yep. eats the charm, the Everfrost, the full combo. This is where you got to leave with that alt shade and make sure it's a one tap <laughs> going on to the Azir. And the follow-up from Smoothie is just fantastic, man. Bard enables you to slow down fights and get everyone set up to capitalize when teams are split. EG does that wonderfully, really well played here as EG fight back. 
I also like Surdy's call there. That felt like EG communicating. He pops Dominus. He says, no, I'm not going to chase down Scary Jerry. I'm repositioning to make sure we kill Odd Orange. They do that. They can chase down Zyko. Let's see what happened after the fact. Because the replay is fun to watch, but what's the map state now? There were no objectives for EG to claim. No Baron. No Dragon. So we just see the lanes pushed in and a gold lead swing a little bit more. I mean, MU were getting it back into their favor. You see that's where the dip was. It was almost even. EG are holding on to that now, but it really does still come down to the next play. That play did not amount for as much as this next play will once it's that Dragon Soul point, once it's that Baron. The amount of control that MU was able to get back out on the map is still pretty dire for the side of EG Kangas. Yeah. So uh, it's not like, you know, all sins are forgiven, but on the bright side, you do have King sitting at three items where he will be very tough to deal with with that LDR. Niles has to be very careful about when he goes in now. Uh, same with Psycho, who has been, uh, I'd say, bullied a little bit this game. I, I haven't seen the Bard in the Rel yet, but I gotta give Smoothie some credit. I feel like he's been able to match the majority of the roams and really slow down the fight around Psycho. So uh, I, I do think this Bard pick has been rather strong this game, and it looks like Smoothie maybe rushing towards... Uh, that force in nature second as move speed ever so valuable on bar to reposition yourself. Get in those auto attacks and cues as the autos is you scale into the late game and pick up more of those meeps. Do actually scale rather nicely. Uh, have a big yeah. AoE slow uh, that I think a lot of people sleep on when it comes to this champion. Especially because it's you get lulled into the sense of security from the initial bard autos. And then once the slow appears, you're scale, like, oh baby. right, he does that also. Yeah, how many stacks does he have? Nice. That's a good amount for this point in the game. Well done. And also, I'll, I'll say, Zyko, you know, rookie support in NACL, he's had a great look on these engaged champions, not necessarily in the lane phase as much as fighting those big moments in teamfights, and the Bard's not a common champ. I, I, I highly doubt many collegiate supports <laughs> are playing Bard against Zyko for him to get experience against, so he's probably learning a lot on the fly here. Baron, know, start it up. You, you see a little though. bit of everything in collegiate, uh, for better or worse. Oh, Trust me enough. from experience, Ooh. there is. Okay. Teleport. And the ultimate goes wide. Out Orange dodges it. Set up. Stunned up by Smoothie. Ryoma with a long flank over the wall now. They're trying Set to lock down Zyko and Odd Orange. Teleport coming in from Niles now. He's just grouping up with the team. He's pushing back EG. He's oh. shut down. Zyko with a massive engage. Where's the follow up though? Shaden's down. Sir down to the back line. Trying to be a front line. They in. got get back. EG with back to back snipes from Smoothie. Oh. Stunning up the carries. At least one of them. But Scary Jerry's still up. The Ezreal can look to carry this with Daisy walking in front. EG say, we don't want the fight. We're just going for the dragon. Maryville are actually fainting towards the Baron. I don't think they can hit it with just two, but King can definitely solo yeah. out this Dragon on his own. I love how slow EG are playing out these fights with the Bard. I, I feel like they're actually using Bard really well in this game. Again, Bard, when he hits his CC, it slows down the fight so much that you can reposition around it. And yeah. EG are doing that to make sure they're focusing down and DPSing the same target so that the Iron sustain doesn't take over. Because this fight, it's a decent start for the side of MU. Smoothie hits a nice ultimate, but Shaden throws his ult through the Tempered Fate, so it goes wayward. Otto Orange is able to live through the first combo from Ryoma. So, you know, it, it's a 4v5 where the health bars of MU are good. EG burned a lot of cooldowns, but Niles gets melted as EG retreat back. This is really good play around the old off. King able to get out of this combo from Zyko as MU can step up far enough to engage, and then starting with a re-engage. Look at this yep. with Smoothie. Finds the stun through the Azir wall. Turning that Shurima shuffle against him. As the Emperor's Divide ends up freezing. Get back in midair. Gets taken down as EG. Take down the Azir. Get that dragon importantly for themselves. So it's sole point. And EG continue to make plays to fight back. Against the comp that at this point. I think has outscaled them. So EG making some really good plays around this. Now MU are back on the pair. So they're going to have to do it again. They do have their ults back up. But not all the flashes. How do EG want to approach this? MU are clumped up in the pit. EG have to approach. Shaden and Sturdy need to be the ones to go forward. Tempered Fate could slow things down. That lands on the two members. Now Ryama jumps in, looks for the charm. That's Ragnarok out of Niles and a lot of damage chunked down. Redemption will heal up MU to a comfortable place, but the Baron has reset. So EG, they got what they were looking for. They stopped the Baron take. They can hit mid as Otto Orange realizes he can't really get through that. Smoothie can also slow chase with some of these magical journeys. You could create some weird angles for uh, Ryoma to have as Ryoma's gonna get found out. 
by the brush that gives vision. So yeah, that makes sense in the Eagle Legends. Yeah. That's all we need on Ivern. Fun. Oh, hold on. He's dead. Okay, King Woo. finds his own play right there and can get out as well. That's the jungler. You can go heal off Baron, man. What's going on this game? As EG just find a random pick. Auto Orange didn't have access to Flash. Daisy was down. Couldn't drop anything to actually deter that. Ryoma's going to try and find an angle, but he is spotted by Zyko. King's low. This is a little bit dangerous for EG. He does have the red buff to sustain it, but King's in danger. I'm going to say it can come down to Scary Jerry. Mid laner's fighting 1v1. Niles trunked out. This and Zyko good. actually looks it's engaged free away from EG and taken down. Smoothie gets that kill. Scary Jerry still full health with blue buff, though. This Ezreal can actually be a thorn in the side of EG, who have pretty low health bars. Kings has to run away from the pit. Yeah, True Shot Barrage will not land, and that is Baron secured. Okay, EG, they get their objective, and they get out. Props to EG, honestly. I, I think they're showing some really good grit in this game against a team that I think Maryville's found more wins in this league thanks to how they've played the back half of some of these games more so than any other team that we've had in Challengers this split, Kangas. As EG... I mean, a team that's really struggling at the bottom of our standing, showing grit like this to really take a game into Maryville when Maryville's comp, I think, outscales. EG are playing their comp better, understanding how they can play around this unique five-pick bard and doing so well enough to bring themselves back in this game. They got to keep that momentum going into this next dragon, though. The fight is not over for EG. And like you had said, Maryville, they find a lot of wins in what feel like desperate situations. I'm thinking back to their FlyQuest series that we didn't even get to see all of live on broadcast. But this could be a big pick here on to Zyko. How's the blast going? He's fine. EG, you can tell that they're starting to think that way, though. How do we catch MU on their rotations? How do we punish them with our control of the current game state? Baron shove in. They will take down this tier 2 turret. So much EG can take on the map. The, the real prize for them is this Mountain Soul. As that that really fights back the scaling against MU. There isn't really enough pen on the side of MU to get through what would be a Mountain Soul. As Ryoma, this is a big commit. He does have Baron to reset. Niles has TP though. Yeah, uh, also has the Ragnarok. He's just tanking it all, not using it yet, but Surdy's catching up here. Niles is going to have to use something. Wave. I mean, with Spirit Rush from Ryoma, you're not getting out of this without burning cooldowns. He actually wants to go back in, pops Ragnarok, and looks to take down Ryoma. Surdy back up, will pick up the kill. EG, find Niles in the side lane. No ghost down the Olaf. Can't really get out of there. As that's 15 seconds before the dragon spawns, so Olaf down for 30. Should be a good enough window for EG to take this uncontested. I wouldn't blame Maryville if they try to contest this. I, I think that Maryville, again, they have scaling options, but going up against Mountain Soul, it's one of the more oppressive souls that are in the game. So we'll see if MU decides to flip. Ryoma won't have ultimate for this fight quite yet. EG waiting to pull this until Ryoma gets back. Ryoma will TP back to get back, putting down some good damage on the Surdy with that Nash's Tooth. They got 18 seconds till Niles can TP in. So Evil Geniuses, with that pick in the side lane, have a champ advantage. Not a flip. How do I mean you want to play this? Oh, get back stunned up. Tempered Fate lands. Oh, really. Now Jaden can look for more. Zyko will fall. So does Odd Orange. That is Dragon Soul to EG. A double kill to King. And this game all but wrapped up after that. Get back caught and cornered. And King will claim another one going legendary. Evil Geniuses have done it. After that, you cannot imagine a much cleaner game after a couple of those hiccups. They've played this one pretty smooth since then. King Zaya, man. I, King's been good this split. It's, it's been really good for King as going legendary this game. Again, a, a, a comp where he gets outranged, but King just, when he walks up, has really picked the right spots, and EG's made a lot of space for King to walk up, so... Really like this game from EG. I think a good look from them. And good to see a team that, again, it, it's been a lot of disappointment for EG this split. Whether it's not having your entire roster. To, oh, hold on. Scary Jerry hit by the charm, but Zyko's here. This is the big rail in front of him. All right, okay, nothing's happening. Right, Continue. Well, where were we? Uh, oh, yeah. EG this year, not having the full roster in spring. Even this split, having a slow start. Being tied for last right now as a challengers team in a league where there's only... Three teams that are affiliated with LCS orgs directly now. It, it's not what EG's been looking for, but 
to have Surdy come in and show some grit like this in this game, I think is a good sign for them moving forward. And honestly, hopefully some things that they can build off of two Kangas. Makes you sweat in the EG corner, seeing the current standings, but the good news is there is still a few weeks left to play out and still yeah. this series. You can 2-0 this. You can turn things around. It is not over until it's over. And this grit that the team is showing right now, I think really highlights that. Especially off of some of the individual EG plays. needs it too. I, they need everyone yeah. they can get. I mean, right now, if playoffs started today, they're out of the playoff picture. So, oh, every win for EG matters. And hey, uh, there are a lot of LCS teams right now that are like, hey, we just need to make top eight of playoffs, right? Anything can happen if we get there. I think this is an EG roster where if they found upsets in the best of three stage, no one would be surprised looking at some of the individual skill this team has. So, uh, every win matters for EG right now is Ryoma. Another on pick on the Niles. Again. Yet again, shoving a side lane. It's the Ragnarok a little early this time around, but there's no chance he turns this one. There's three members of Evil Geniuses here, and even though he gave his best effort, Smoothie will pick up the kill. So two picks on the Niles in a side lane. MU are actually floundering a little bit here in the late game. And EG are capitalizing on that, pouncing on that. This is a team that we had expected to be more towards the top of the Sandians. I would... I know you're saying that no one would be surprised if they picked up wins in the best of threes. I think people are surprised that there's a chance they don't make the best of threes. That's really where expectations were for this team. So happy to see them at least stepping yeah. up here against one of the teams that has been overperforming from a lot of our expectations. MU, the collegiate team coming in here, have picked up games against the top teams. Yeah. Disguised, uh, wild card, uh, oh. you know, Team Liquid. And now, okay, Scary Jerry does get picked off. As I start my rant about how good MU have looked, they have lost two members in a row here. So there was a ward cursing. there. He didn't know there was a ward there. Shade him that yeah. with ultimate. It was good that time. There was no quines on Scary Jerry, and he did an arcane shift to buff that away. EG find a kill. That, that's my explanation of that play. Continue, Kangas. Well, that about wrapped it up. MU okay. have been performing incredibly well, but this time around it is Evil Genius's game. They have the Baron. They have Dragon Soul. Game's all but done and dusted. Surdy will push oh, you the top said it. wave. I said it. That's the full curse right there. But I, uh, I don't know if evil geniuses care much for curses. Usually, the evil geniuses are the ones that like rub the cursed lamp to begin with in the movies. So, curse lamp. It's not. Good. I, I'm just trying to think. Like, what about the genie know? lamp? Well, yeah. Isn't that kind of the thing? I mean, genie's genie, not a curse. It's a blessing. Right? You have three wishes. I don't know enough about this subject matter to really speak on it, but either way. Unless you're rubbing uh, Jafar's lamp, then that's not good. That, that's True. the first lamp. That is how that movie goes. Spoilers. <laughs> In case you haven't seen it. 20 year old movie at this point. Probably even more than that. About I Jafar 7. How, how many Aladdins were there? There are a lot of Aladdins. I am always shocked every time I hear the number because I'm like, there's no way. I've only ever seen the first one. But I forget that Disney kept making more of those like classic movies that anybody only remembers the first one of. Regardless, though, let's get back up to Alive here. Evil Geniuses take down all the inhibitor turrets. Shade and engage on by Psycho, but King is just King. so massive right now but is he big enough oh get back claims the kill even though he goes down for the effort now niles has to flash away surdy is chasing him down ryoma there as well and evil geniuses have done it mu racing back to their fountain it's only scary jerry and odd orange left alive and there's no turrets to help them evil geniuses right the wrongs of the first two days for the second round robin and they will pick up a win against mu off to EG that game. I, I think EG showed a lot of grit. Something that we really haven't seen out of this team. And it's not all clean. There are still mistakes being made by EG. But the fact they were able to fight back in that game. Find that win again. Two thirds of the way through the season almost. EG needs yeah. wins to make the playoffs. And honestly, more importantly, need reasons to build some confidence and momentum in their favor. And for me, that's a game where you can actually find some of those things. King was fantastic. Yeah, he went down in that last fight, but that rip at the end even got the Azir in the back mm -hmm. half, so he's still trading up. I thought King was really, really strong in that game. Someone who has been performing for EG this entire split, but was enough to get them over the finish line in that one. The gold graph tells the story of the game. EG were playing well, they were playing well, they had a little dip, but then they brought it back. The concern that I always have for EG is if something goes wrong, how do they recover in the game? I think they did a really good job this time around. I'm happy that you highlighted Smoothie so much on the Bard pick. I think that was massive for doing those turnaround plays. But with that said, 
That's it for game number one. We're going to throw it over to a short break before we bring Magical back for our Rally Cry halftime show while we get ready for game number two. See you there. The LCS Challengers League is brought to you by Turo, the world's largest car sharing marketplace. Find your drive.